Wrestling.com. Dave Meltzer joining us here. Newest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter up right now, WrestlingObserver.com. You can sign up. You get all of our podcasts, the podcast library, 13,000 episodes, back issues of The Observer, and the new Observer every week, about 40,000 words of news and information, analysis of uh, pro wrestling. And uh, Dave, you've got a story here, obviously, about WrestleMania, which is coming up in about a week now. And uh looks like Cody and Seth still on. Well, I mean, that's been the match that's been slated for a month or longer, you know. So, yeah, it's still on. Everyone in WWE thinks that it's happening, and uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, that's, that is, you know, those are the matches that are on the books. You know, sometimes they change. Um, a couple matches have changed this year, but that one has not been one of them. Well, if we uh, if we go by Raw, that would mean that they need to kick off Raw Monday with uh, with this angle because Seth said the match the show is not starting until he gets his match at WrestleMania. Perhaps I mean again we've heard talk that it may be one of those things where it's just a surprise and like the Hardys you know that was the exact description given to me so um, not that it's going to be that but that that's been talked about so we'll have to wait and see I mean. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, you know, and obviously some close to Cody are, have different stories, so we'll have to wait and see. Dave, just out of curiosity, when it comes to WrestleMania rolling up on the season, uh, they've done because of COVID, they've done a lot of cinematic matches over the last couple of years, and it's something that you know AEW. Everybody has dipped their toe in, and some people have hung on to it. Other people have. It's gone with WWE. How much do you think we'll see? Especially because it, they they do fill a lot of time on these shows with things that aren't wrestling. And could we see this be the case with Austin or with Rollins and Cody or with something like that? With Austin, no, a hundred percent, no. Um, he's going to be in the building on Saturday, or or, doing... or I guess let me ask too, it, or a hybrid of that, which they've also done before. Yeah, like um, what was it? Uh, the oh, the match in uh, Los Angeles with Roddy Piper and Goldust, right? Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's a, even a better well, example. I was thinking more of the modern kind of stuff, but yeah, that's even yeah doing something even like that, where something it either goes in or out of the the arena. Yeah, yeah, you tape you tape a lot of it beforehand, get through the you know, cut through the bad stuff, and then do a finish in the ring. I mean, you could do that for any of the matches. Um, you know, I I mean, I don't I haven't heard that they're doing that, but yeah, of course you could. Just because of Austin's again his condition, and obviously people are talking about he's in better condition than ever. But obviously, I he's obviously well, probably not, been... not not than ever. I mean, I mean, he's, well, for he's, yeah, he's I guess fifty seven. For... <laughs> but but I've, I've I've talked to people who were were with him in the last um, week or two. I guess you know just very recently. I don't know the exact date, but um, he's in great shape. You know that's what they told me. You know, so and I know he's been doing working on his cardio and he's he's a prideful guy. He's not going to go in there and half ass it. He's not going to go in there to stink. You know what I mean? He wouldn't do it. You know, for all the money in the world, he wouldn't go out there to stink. He's going to do the best he can. And, uh, you know, I mean, in limited doses and everything like that, I think I hope he, he'll be good. I know. I, I think he'll be he would not want to go out there and do a bad performance. I know that. You know, I don't like to uh, keep pushing this idea that may not happen at all, but uh between the discussion of potentially putting this this whatever they're doing with Angle and Austin on last Saturday night, the idea that they moved the AJ Edge match to the other show, which means we now have seven matches on one show and only five on Sunday. I mean, I, I still don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Saturday is an Angle shot for a match of some sort with Austin and Owens on Sunday. Anything's possible. I don't re re reject that out of hand, but I would say, um, you know, yeah, if they're looking at something to to, uh, to spark Sunday ticket sales, because, um, you know, Sunday ticket sales are behind Saturday. And, um, yeah, and we, had, we had six matches on each show, and then one gets moved, so now it's seven and five. It's uh, so Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you took still... a match on Sunday, off Sunday, to move it to Saturday. Yeah, but, but the matches that are still to be announced... Um, like the Cody match are probably on Sunday, and there's several of those, so that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Hmm. Well, I guess we will see. Triple H is uh, interview today. He's done. You know, I, I think that you know we pretty much knew that uh, for months. Um, but yeah, I know I saw 
I saw the interview. You know, I think we he, knew it was very bad, but I didn't know that he actually had a defibrillator that is permanently in his chest. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I knew I knew his heart was was real bad, and um, I knew he was never going to wrestle again. I mean, that much I knew. I mean, it was. I didn't know all the details, but I knew the the basic gist of it, and. Um, yeah, you know, it was just, it was sad to watch in that way. I mean, I, I, you know, it's weird because I don't think of from the, from this perspective and and from the day it happened, I never once thought of his wrestling career or even his executive career. I just, you know, thought about him. You know, you're you got three you got three kids, and you know, don't stress yourself. That's all I could. Th- you know, that's the only thing legitimately that I ever have thought about since then. When people go like, "Is he going to come back to NXT? Is he going to come back to do this and this?" And it's like. I just want him to, you know, have as the least amount of stress as possible in his life because his situation is very serious, you know, and, um, you know, it, it, it can't be minimized. We also got a lot more in the new issue this week, follow-up notes regarding the death of Scott Hall. And uh, what else do we have this week? What did you, what did you learn? Well, I mean, just a, just a couple of, you know, different stories as far as, um, you know, the, the Razor Ramon character was actually the second character he pitched to Vince. Um, the first character was a military guy because based on his father, you know, he was a military guy. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of other stuff, his thoughts on jobs. You know, he, um, you know, I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't a guy who would complain about losing, but at the same time, because he had a very strong knowledge of wrestling, there were certain <laughs> times where he thought it was imperative that he won. And, you know, two of those times were um, the uh, SummerSlam, um, or the, the Survivor Series, I should say, the match with um, the first the first big pay-per-view with Flair and him against who was originally Savage and Warrior. And he was going to win that, and then when Kurt Hennig was put in the spot when Warrior was fired, they didn't want to... You know, they wanted Hennig's to win, so they did a DQ finish. And he, he thought this was a time that I needed to win, especially because he was going to be, you know, booked with Bret Hart for the title next. And the other one was with the Austin match at WrestleMania where he felt as coming in, you know, he uh, needed to win that match. You know, he was absolutely, it was on board, you know, when he was going to win is that obviously he was going to lose a rematch to Austin when the time was right to lose the rematch. And he knew that too, and there was no problem with it. But, you know, it didn't happen where he got the win. And I understood, I mean, when it was going on, I would not have booked him to win, even though a lot, you know, like traditional wrestling booking, you would say he should win. But for all the reasons that he didn't win, which is essentially that you don't have Steve Austin lose to a guy whose situation is such that he might not be with the company in three weeks, that to me just isn't worth the risk. So, but he was very adamant about that. You know, he thought like I'm coming in. You know, even though it's I'm gonna, you know, it was gonna be he was gonna cheat to win, but he felt that he needed that first win. And in hindsight, being that he was fired very shortly after, um, it wasn't worth the, you know, it wasn't worth the risk of having Austin lose to him, and then you know he just disappears, and you know Austin doesn't get the win back or whatever. But Dave, it, it, what isn't that Scott Hall's? wrestling brain and not scott hall's reality brain which you know in in six man tag team matches i mean he would be the one if it was hogan and nash he would be the worker and he would probably be the one to take the loss like oh yeah in, yeah yeah because the two protected themselves of, more yeah and in the grand scheme of things of wrestlemania that year when it was hogan and rock where hogan was going to lose and it was uh austin and hall and it's like hall's whole career it, it with the nwo and kind of with it, it was always being able to put somebody over i understand what he's thinking from a wrestling point of view but like at that point in his career and what he was was he nervous in any way or now showing signs of like a fear maybe because of his alcoholism or something like that where the role he has always done that he's always excelled at that's why you want a guy like that like he's he's worried about losing to Steve Austin at WrestleMania. It's, well, it's not. It, it, it's because it was his first big match back. You know, and, and if you're going to be on top, using your wrestling brain, you want your first big match back as a win. You know, kind of like I was watching a kid on on Tuesday night, and it's just like you beat him in his second weekend. You know what Adelaide I mean? Kind of like Cody and Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. You probably wouldn't want to beat Cody that first night in. <laughs> you probably you probably wouldn't i would not guarantee any finish at all because it's wwe but but yeah yeah like if Seth, if well you know well you know very at, quickly look, I at, mean, look at brock lesnar and brock i was Lesnar's gonna say that back. that's the most famous one but i think i think that was kind of like it was almost a scott hall thing because if i recall correctly they were like 
you know, we don't know if this guy's going to last. Like, he's going to get angry. He's going to quit. We may yep. as well have somebody but but beat him Brock to get Lesner. it over with. And then, but my, th- but my thing is, it's Brock Lesnar. Even Scott Hall would not at that time have moved to one. You know what I mean? So it's like the loss. Well, you know, Scott. Scott great. was. You know, okay. So here's the thing. Scott it just was like to me, it's like a psychological thing. Like maybe he showed a real crack there because his wrestling brain's exactly right. But like, it really didn't matter. Well, go ahead, Dave. Because we got about a minute. Okay. okay oh, well, sorry. I mean, he Scott was booked to win that match and Austin nixed it you know yeah. I and mean, that is that is what happened so I mean that was one of the reasons I think that you know he wasn't happy was the sense that yeah he was booked to win and Austin got it overturned because Austin had power now at that time because I, I was very familiar with what was going on I absolutely thought Austin was right I didn't think that I thought in that situation Scott was too much of a risk for Austin to lose to you know, at, in that at, in that period of time, even though it wouldn't have killed Austin or anything like that, but it's just like, what is the smart move? Like, like the the correct wrestling booking move if everybody's healthy is Scott wins with outside interference, which was the finish. But the reality moves, you know, sitting there looking at every piece of the puzzle. To me, it was like, are you kidding? Wanting to have Scott beat Steve Austin? I mean, I I thought that the very idea of it was ridiculous. All right, well, we have to head to a break. Sorry, Dave, to cut you off, but we are back in a moment with more Observer Live. I was reading this book about bats. The book explains that a bat cannot stand and then take off, okay? A bat can only fall from a great height and then fly. Gotcha. Sting is now a bat. He just goes up on something really high, and he falls. He he did not jump through these tables. (laughs) He he fell. He fell. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.